Hello there, Brick Fanatics. Nostalgia is a powerful thing. It can transport you instantly back to your childhood, and it can entirely empty your bank account. And if you're a fan of LEGO, it does both frequently. We had the opportunity to sit down for an interview with Henrik Rubin Sabi, the lead designer of the new LEGO 10332 Medieval Town Square, and he had an awful lot to say about the process of designing a nostalgic LEGO set. As someone who has been working at the LEGO Group for quite some time now, Sabi has seen entire themes come and go, he's seen building techniques change dramatically, he was there when a lot of the sets that these nostalgic LEGO sets were based on were being designed. Before we get into the interview, make sure by the way that you give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you've not already done so, and the notification bell if you have not already done so, so that you can be the first to know when any of these new videos are released. With that said, here's what Henrik Rubin Sabi had to say about Medieval Town Square. Take it away, Henrik. I'm Henrik, uh, senior designer in Icons. Uh, been uh, at Lego for since 95, um, and this set is uh, nostalgic medieval set we have done uh, both because it's uh, we need a new town instead of the 2010 medieval marketplace uh, and then also to uh, celebrate the 90s together with the castle um, so as, as you're approaching this obviously you're building on what's been done with the castle as well but also you're expanding this um, one, one thing that I thought was very interesting is how everything has a story to it yeah. and how every character has their own role yeah um, what's the thought that goes into a process like that it's um, I think it's it depends on the designer for my my sake it's, it's I really like to give the, the character some personalities some small background stories it also makes it easier to to fill the houses with stuff. What do they need to cater? What what are they doing? What are they working with? What kind of character are? It's what comes into the house. So it's it's for me. It's important that they have a background story. That's brilliant. Um, and so obviously, there's a lot of nostalgia in this, and this set is aimed at people who remember the castle theme yeah. from back in the day. Uh, how do you go about choosing which nostalgic themes get? Uh, priority because of course there's so many years of Lego but we often see castle coming up again and again um, yeah it's it's you can say it's it's a uh, it's a long way to to come to this set uh, also we, we of course look what has been out there what's out there now and what could we think could be out there in the future so so it's it's a bigger plan and then it's uh, it was time for having a new market town uh, and we had the castle last year and the pirate bay um, and yeah, uh, the, the pirate fort also. So it, it's kind of felt the right that now it's this is the time for, for this kind of medieval town. Cool. So as you say, it, it felt right. Is that uh, something that comes from higher up, or is that something that you as, as designers kind of get to choose for yourselves? It's it's a little bit of both. Uh, as designer, we we of course look what what's out there, what is the interest of of the people out there, what what could be, and what. Uh, what have been done and how far back is things done and then we of course uh, pitch that to to up in in the lines and then sometimes we are we're lucky that it go through and then sometimes we get another idea from from top level and then we do that so it's a uh, it's a bit of a mix brilliant so I noticed that in this you've got some very specific throwbacks to really like the, you know the catalog has been turned into a tapestry. Yeah. Um, how do you choose the things that that you focus on? Is it a matter of things that you as, as the designers remember and enjoy, or is it um, kind of feeling yeah. from the wider community? It's it's, I think it's a thing of both. That that it's something that I enjoy and and then work together with Ashwin that we saw on on the on the little rings. Uh, and we talked about what could be the fun stuff to bring in as a decorations and, and characters and so on. And then um, look back and what was cool back in the days, what, how did we do it? And the tapestry for this one was spot on for making like look like a catalog from day 78, uh, no, 87, uh, no, 78. Um, so it, it's, um, yeah, it's, yeah. 
Fair enough. So you've obviously um, been working with the Lego Group and been doing this for, for years and years and years at this point, very experienced. What's it like for you as you kind of return to things that um, maybe, you, maybe you have worked on earlier in your career uh, and doing them again um, kind of in the nostalgic way? Is there a difference to the way you approach them now? Uh, for me personally there is because I've been working very much in the play themes area and the IPs area before and, and also uh, when we did the, some earlier castle launch back in the 2009 and 10. Um, so going back to this one and revisit it and have the chance to put all the details and all the small stories and so on that you you, you we try, but we always can't do in a play theme because of it's for kids and so on. Where this one is, is yeah, it's it's you can you can twist it a little bit so you you get more stuff, more fun stuff in there. So it it it's a pleasure to to do that. So actually go back to do something you have done before. Yeah. So I guess you get the opportunity to to expand on things that couldn't yeah. be explored. Yeah. Uh, before. Do you feel that there's been a difference in the way that, with so many more elements now, in the way that you're able to approach these yeah. and the level of detail you're able to put in? Yes, of course. Um, <laughs> when, when I started in 95, there, there, we didn't have a lot of those elements we have today to to build sideways uh, uh, in, in a lot of directions. We just stack uh, elements at that time. Uh, so today you, you can do much more details that we could those days, so it's uh, it's fun <laughs> to, to do that. Is there ever an element of um, you thinking to yourself, I would really love to go back and visit this, or I would like to do this again, or do you feel like it's more led by what, what no, you feel other people want? Of course there is some, some model you really want to, okay, it could be so cool to do that again, and it's, it would be so fine and nice to rebuild that, and it, it's so... And of course, we push also those forward in, in the queue. But it's and again, it's it's uh, you can say it's 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 a whole the Lego group is it's a whole one unit that decides what to to reveal and what to bring out. So it's yeah, <laughs> it's not all us on us, but uh, we 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 built it. I definitely think you get the sense when a designer has enjoyed the process. Like the, the, you always see that that joy kind of shine through yeah. in the sets. We've seen a few different directions for nostalgic sets. So we've had like the Galaxy Explorer Super Sizer set, yeah. the Eldorado Fortress is almost like a complete one for one remake. And now we've yeah. got sets like the Lion Knight's Castle and this one that yeah. are a bit more, um, you know, taking the bones of the original thing and doing so completely yeah. new. What determines the particular direction that you go in? Yeah, it, that's really hard to say because this could also be a retake of, of the 2010. Uh, Market village uh, town. Uh, it also the price point. What price point are we given? It it's it's really, yeah. And then, what kind of elements do we have uh, for this one? What can we do that we couldn't do with the first one, and so on. And it will also be like the galaxy. It's 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 bigger and it's it's uh, built in another way than we did that time. But it's still something you can see what it is. This one is. Yeah, you can say nostalgia or not, it, but it, it fits with the line of, of medieval kind of uh, thing we have going on with the before and now and with the King's Castle. And was the intention always to go beyond the Lion Knight's Castle or is this more of like a, res a result of the response that you saw to the castle? No, it has been, it, from, from day one, this one has been like, uh, I wanted to be the town either in the castle or next to the castle. And that's also why we have some of some of the castle built in here, and 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 the same person, same guards, and so on. So it was my personal that it should be belong to to this castle, so you could expand your universe. I have a question about the the forestman that's in here. So when you're choosing um, kind of which retro nostalgic factions to include in this and which minifigures to update or which which other characters uh, what's the process there uh, because obviously here we're getting uh, Forsman rather than more and more and more guards yeah 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 you can say in, in the King's Castle you have the forest men the, the, the Robin Hood guys sorry, and, and and here wolf, we have wolf, the wolf pack sorry, sorry that's I'm, okay that's okay it could a be a forestman we actually talked about should the forestman be here but then again it will be too much the same character line that you get in the castle 
and and sometimes we love to bring in a character that 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 it's fun to have back and the wolf pack hasn't been out there for many years and it could be fun to to bring one of those guys in uh, and we always have a dream to to bring back old characters old um, uh, groups of of castle people um, so it it could be kind of a, a push to to the higher level of of ordering here that that we want to bring some more of those guys in but there was a never so um, I'm aware that if I ask specifics, you won't necessarily be able to talk about. When looking back at your career, what are the kinds of Lego sets that you would like to have the chance to expand on and, and revisit for nostalgia? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I can't. I can't tell you that. But I mean, like, by <coughs> what kind of designs, or, or are there are there certain kind of build techniques that, that you oh. feel like you would like to, to, yeah. to revisit? We what we can do with the elements today with all the brackets and, and, and bows and what we got that we didn't get uh, and back in the days there is of course some some line of uh, of uh, Johnny Thunder Adventures uh, and um, the early Harry Potter and but we're doing Harry Potter still but yeah. it could be fun to, to redo some of those old sets in, in a new way that we did that time um, so it will get a new feeling a new look uh, but then again, we have some skilled talents on, on Harry Potter today, so maybe they're going to do that, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it could be fun to bring some of the back, old bags uh, with the new techniques we're using. Yes, that must be interesting for you as someone who has been here for so long and who yeah. has such a storied career to see other designers come in who have been inspired by you. Um, yeah. Is it, do, you, do you feel like you have... I suppose uh, like a, a a greater mentoring uh, role as a result of that that people come to you for advice or, or suggestions more so than they would otherwise. <clears throat> I hope so, uh, and 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 uh, they always they also come to me for for questions and ideas and and so on. But I hope they see me as a <laughs> as a greater mentor because I've been here so long. Uh, but uh, I also try to give. The, the young designer uh, a good feedback that they kind of can learn from without being don't do that but maybe you could do it like that um, and then again it's also you can say it's a learning when you have been here so long and starting with stacking and then building in another way it's, it's also learning even though you've been here so long to build in the other way so yeah do you fun. feel like you, you get things from yeah. other newer designers as well definitely yeah because they, they, a lot of them come from outside, have been sitting uh, home and, and built in, in their ways. And some of that technique, some is illegal that we will change, of course, but th it's, it's really inspiring to see what you can do. Um, so it's, uh, it's it, both ways. That's great. Just to refocus yeah. on, the, on the set a little bit, um, what did like the earliest sketch models look like and how has it changed since then? The early sketch model was, um, we, we have two houses connected here and over here we have uh, a single house and then it started out to be two houses put together and then I want to put three houses together because we haven't done that before with hinges. We have always doing like two houses that you can open and close but never in this way. So I want to challenge that, that we could, could do this. Uh, so, But the first one was just two houses there and one bigger house over here. Gotcha. And what were some of like the biggest challenges beyond turning that into a three building? Um, it must be that, that you you that you can still lift it just because if it's hinged two places that you can still do that and, and, and can feel that you it holding together and not breaking. Uh, and then of course there is some stability on roofs and so on that we have had a challenge on but uh, clear and then this kind of built that you have this kind of small arch over the window is was was also a fun thing to to challenge yourself with. Nice. And then um, obviously we should probably talk about the girt. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. <laughs> why why was now the right time? Hmm. Yeah, I got the same questions in in, in the conference room, but um, it it's 
uh, there wasn't room for it for in, in the knight's castle in the, um, or the king's castle. Um, and having a marketplace where you didn't have either a cow horse or a new animal or an old animal would be weird. So it was just spot on that it fitted with this one, and especially when we come up with that, that we have this cheese factory, a cheese, cheese maker's home, that goat cheese and cow cheese and whatever in there. So, And there was a cow in the King's Castle, so you could bring it in here, as so kind of make the, the whole story. And so you've seen like the demand, I guess, from people. To, to but yeah, it's it's been there and has been there for many years. Not that we kind of said we do it because we had demanded to, but it was just fitted with this one. If we should have it in again, it should be now. So. So was that the way that you decided on a lot of the, the kind of the elements and the, the, the minifigures that are included in this where you kind of had the story and the idea first? You so you had the, the idea for the cheesemaker first and then the goat was a logical inclusion. Yeah. Some some part of it was that 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 of, of the same with the shield maiden that uh, or the shield maker. Um, I wanted to have kind of a a, a tie in also it's a bit stretched but to the Viking. Um, that she was a shield maiden, there's also Thor's hammer in there and, and a Viking shield in there. But then again, what should her story be? So I made it up so that she was a shield maker. And, and then Ashman we said, oh, we should do the Queen's queen shield that we haven't done a shield for the Queen before. So it, of course, that was now. So That's an interesting question. So uh, one thing I've noticed with these is that you have done a lot of updating what was a very male theme in terms of minifigures yeah. and you've, you've mm -hmm. made big efforts to make the, 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 the new sets more diverse. Um, is that something that you, you kind of, you see opportunities for new minifigures as you go or is that yeah. something where you kind of dis decide beforehand, I think that we should include women, where are we going to put them in this set? Um, again, I think a different from designer to designer. I started out with that, that I knew that I had uh, seven to eight characters in this set, uh, and and I wanna then I lined it up kind of. It should be an innkeeper. It should be whatever story that you have. It should be a woman or a man or, or a boy or a girl. Or, so I started out before I actually put them into the houses, uh, and then on the go I said, okay, this should be where they do the tapestry, and then this guy is the tapestry maker, and also making, you know. Uh, like she is the woodworker and he is the tapestry. It's kind of in, 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 in the medieval days it will be opposite that that she will be the one making tapestry and he will be the woodworker. But I think it's both because yeah, as you said, with the women and men, but also the um, a little bit of humor in it that that he's the tapestry maker and, and she's the tough one making all the the woods and and she making shields and and so on. So it's, uh, it's it's interesting to genuinely to hear you talk about kind of the story of it, and as you were saying before about how you have the idea of like the parents are away buying a yeah. cow. So are there are there elements of this um, that you kind of things that you, you wish you could have included but you didn't, or kind of story beats that yeah. are not going to come across? <clears throat> there's always part, and, and and I would love to have more characters in there as well, but uh, there's there's a limit on what we can do, but and there's also some stories of would like to have told in this in this set but they have been saved for, for another set so uh. who, who do you see as like the main audience for Lego's like, nostalgia sets and I guess in particular castle sets because they're all quite large yeah I, I'm of course those who is really into to medieval and castle and, and, and maybe had the, some of the old castles before but I also see this as a, as a set for people that just love an old city for this town. If they have a, a you know the whole line of, of a modern town, then there is a part of the town there is medieval because it's the old part of the town that that fits with this one. Of course, change the characters' looks, and and then then you have a modern town with an old town. So, but also some kids will of course love this because we haven't had a medieval town. For, for many many years now, so there's there should be an audience for that. What do you think is the key to good nostalgia design compared to, say, 
you know, what some people might call like fan service, but something that actually really speaks to people. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I think it's it's important that that it's something that people can recognize from older days, uh, either from old Lego set, but also from reality older days. Uh, that it's it's something that okay, this is I can remember this as well. Kid was into this town, or I had this set when I was a kid with the the town, the market town. Uh, or the old castle, and you can feel that it's the same kind of vibe there is to it. I think that's important, and then of course, um, it should look something that it's from older days. I know the build is different that we do before, but it's it should still have the feeling of that you have. If you take the guard tower and, and the red house, it could be something from from the market town uh, in 2010. Where the other one is is more detailed, but that part is is, uh, is making it look like something from back in time. There you have it, an absolutely wonderful interview. We thank Henrik Rubensabi for his time, and we thank you for your time in watching all the way to the end of the video. Make sure, since you're here anyway, that you head down into the comments and let us know what you thought of the interview and what you think of the new Medieval Town Square set. Make sure, by the way, that if you are going to purchase it or any other LEGO, that you do so using the affiliate link, which is in the description, or the QR code, which is on screen right now. Doing so just gives us a little bit of a kickback and helps to keep the lights on at Brick Fanatics. Make sure also that you go to brickfanatics.com for all of your LEGO coverage, and make sure that you sign up to our newsletter so that you never miss anything LEGO related ever again. Thank you very much for watching.